Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that was requested for by my patrons. They voted and actually this whole video was inspired by my patrons but they chose for me to try some new substrates or like planting mediums specifically fluval and tree fern fiber. Like in every single live chat we have, I feel like we end up getting onto the topic of like fluval stratum and tree fern fiber and everyone I speak to about it like really, really loves them. Or at least everyone on my Patreon loves them. And like they've been like begging me to try it out. Um, and I've just not so far. They are like a little bit more on the pricey side and so I've kind of been nervous. And I'm like, I feel like I'm quite set in my ways at this point. I've been growing plants for over five years now and like I kind of know what I like. And so trying completely new substrates is like scary. But like last time I tried a new substrate, it was semi-hydro and like I absolutely love that. So like maybe these will be amazing for me and I will love them. So that's what we're gonna do today. Try out some new substrates, a um, bit of a repot and chat style. I've got some plants over here that I'm going to be testing out with these. And I did like take some notes about these different things. So I feel like explain to those of you who haven't heard of these things before what they are. Because I didn't really know before <laughs> researching for this video because it's just like not something that have previously crossed my path. Before we start, before I start planting stuff up, I just wanna say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy the tests. This is the trying this out. Also, let me know down below your experience with these these substrates if you've tried them before because I just like desperately want to know what people have done with them, how they've liked it and stuff like that. So, please share your experience down below because I I'm trying to learn. Um and this is how I'm going to do it. So, let's get started. I think where I'm going to start is with the tree fern fiber and I've kind of got two options here so I got this totem which is like a pre-made sort of tree fern fiber compressed into a pole and then I also got myself a bag of just like the tree fern substrate but it's like kind of like a bunch of little sticks and I've never used something like it before, so I wanted to give it a go and try it out and see whether or not I like it as a substrate because I have heard brilliant things about it. So let's start with the totem because it's like, I feel like a gentler entry into this. I, have, I just like don't know what I'm doing with this sort of substrate. It's not been something I've otherwise thought of trying. This makes me nervous because it's like not got anything wrapped around it. And it's like, I don't know if you can see or hear all those bits coming off. And it's kind of flexible. Like... I just breathed and dust flew everywhere, okay. Let's put this to the side so it doesn't go over everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the pole. And like, it's got a little bit of bend to it. It's like not perfectly straight. I almost wish it had a slightly more support. But at the same time, I like, it should be fine. It's basically just compacted into a brick kind of thing and what I was thinking I could put on here is all of my splendids <laughs> all of my splendids um, because as you can see I have several at this point 
and I think that they would do quite well on a pole. I know they will. That's the best way to grow them in order to get mature growth. You can tell this one's like begging for one. And I thought why not try it with a tree fern fiber because that is, that seems like a good medium of choice. One of the things that I have been recommended with tree fern fiber and like why my patrons have spoke about it so much is that it doesn't become hydrophobic like moss does when it get like dries out. Like one of the main problems I've had with my moss poles, although I absolutely love my moss poles, one of the main issues I've had thus far is that once I kind of forget to rehydrate them soon enough, they can get hydrophobic and rehydrating them from that point is a little bit more on the difficult side. It's a process, it takes time. Whereas tree fern fiber doesn't get hydrophobic when it dries out. So it's much easier to water if you've not watered it in a while, which could be a really great thing and save me a lot of time in, like with my moss poles. I know you can also add it as like an additive to your um, like substrate, but that's not, that's not my intended purpose for it. Like that's not what I thought of first when I wanted to try it. Also, I should say that um, tree from fiber originates from New Zealand mostly. Um, the specific brand I have is um, Fernwood, tree fern fiber, both the totem and this bag are Fernwood. And they claim to be sustainably sourced, which I do, like from just from looking at their website, it does look like they are sustainably sourcing the tree fern fiber, which is good because I know that there are some problems within that industry on like, over farming and not leaving the environment as good as you found it and stuff like that. I believe Fernwood is not a company that does that, but I would suggest you doing your own research on that if you are looking for something like sustainable. I'm still not 100% sure with it and I don't want to like claim that it's the top of sustainability when I don't know. Um, if anybody else has more information on that, again, please put it down in the comments because I, I, I try to be a sustainable human. Um, that is like a, a goal of mine. Of course, we can't all be 100% sustainable. And I know buying like fiber or anything from New Zealand when I live in the UK, it's probably not the most sustainable thing in the world. But it's, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, like we gotta do our best and if fern fiber is the best, then maybe, maybe it's worth trying. Um, but it is also 100% natural. There's nothing unnatural within it. And it's often used in terrariums and vivariums. I think that's kind of where it originally like gained popularity. Um, I think Fluval did as well, um, for that matter. Or I think they might be aquariums. Either way, um, it wasn't like originally intended for houseplants, but it just kind of turns out that it works really well for things like aeroids and semi-epiphytic plants and stuff like that, that like, like a good mix of air and like moisture within within their roots. Sorry, this is actually taking like way longer than I thought I would. I probably should have done this before I uh, started filming this video, but um, alas, here I am. Another reason that people like it is that it has really great moisture retaining capabilities while still providing aeration into the substrate. So it doesn't like compact in the same way and like get really tight and non-airy, which like, your roots do need air to survive unless you're growing them fully hydroponically. Um, they do need some amount of air, even if you are growing them fully hydroponically. I feel like you use those like bubble machines or whatever to like make sure that they're getting air into the water. I don't know. I don't grow things fully hydroponically. But yeah, it, it is, it, it's great at moisture retaining, which I think is super duper important. And like it can be used um, to assist with drainage. It does hold water, 
but at the same time doesn't. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm still learning <laughs> with this substrate and trying it out and maybe once I've tried it for a while and experienced its moisture retaining and or good drainage capacities, I'll better be able to talk about it so I can do a follow-up video on this one at some point. Um, <laughs> I think I will need to because this is just the start of the experiment, my very first impressions and like first bits of information regarding these substrates. Um, what else? It can be used in high humidity, which is really good as well. Um, smacking myself in the face. But high humidity and a lot of plants like aeroids and semi-epiphytes and stuff really like high humidity environments. I feel like also if you got a plank of fernwood, it might be a really good thing to mount something on top of, like a staghorn fern or something. Like that kind of vibe makes sense in my head. Again, I haven't done it. I don't know if that is actually true facts or I'm just speculating. Um, but I feel like it would work really well and because it does have good moisture retaining, it wouldn't it would like serve the uh, staghorn for like quite a while. So that's really, really good. Oh yeah, and like it can be used in high humidity without breaking down as well. It doesn't break down that much. It stays within its, like it doesn't decompose as fast as some other materials would if you kept them in similar conditions. So that is a positive and another reason that people do really, really like it. Come on. Come on, out of there. <laughs> also, it's quite easy to tell when it's wet versus when it's dry. I will try that out a little bit later and, and see because I feel like it'll be pretty obvious. It's like a light brown, sort of like this, when it is dry. Whereas when it's wet, like you can tell it's saturated. Like you know when you can tell soil is saturated by like the deepness of its color? I think fern fiber works in the same way. And so it's gonna be a lot more obvious from a distance whether or not my pole is saturated enough. I, uh, does it have nutrients? No, you, you do need to add nutrients. But like, I, I can add nutrients. I add nutrients to my moss poles already. But I feel like because it's similar to a substrate, it like the roots can live in it when it's drier and it's like not the end of the world. I don't know, it just feels like it's an easier version of moss for some reason. I, I don't know if, if that is the case, but that is what it, it sounds like from what I've heard and read. But... The thing that I have found is it is quite expensive. So that bag of tree fern fiber that I bought, it's five liters. And I bought it for $12.99, which if I were buying soil, like premium soil from Soil Ninja, I could get like 10 liters of premium, like mixed soil for that price. And that's like the high end of soil. So I feel like it is a very expensive sort of thing. And maybe that is just because like Fernwood sustainably sources their materials, but it, it like, it's not something that I feel like I can buy on the regular because of that price. I, I don't know, maybe like, maybe, but probably not. Okay. Second, Splendid. This is actually the one that I got from the Rare Plant Rescue Box. So you can see it lost a lot of leaves and its roots are pretty meh. Mm. I actually don't think this one is ready. Okay, I'll sort that one out later. Doesn't need to be done right now. But this one, it's already in some soil and there's like several in here. So let me rearrange, squish that to the side and we can get a pot of these going. So I think I want to, <laughs> I 
think I want to use an aeroid tower pot for this because I can't like strap it in the same way I would a moss pole and I feel like having that little bit of extra height on it on the pot will help it stay put I feel like this is gonna be a difficult thing to to do I mean, these are doing really well. Maybe I do need to just quickly tap some of the soil off and detangle them a bit. And my plan for this one, because it is like a round, or I mean it's square, but it's like a 360 pole rather than a one-sided D-shaped pole, which is what I otherwise frequently use, I can put these kind of like all around it in hopes that I can get like a sort of 360 sort of pipe. I know that would require me to like rotate the pot and stuff, but it's a doable thing, I think. Okay, let's see what I can do. <laughs> These are all attached together, whoops. It's okay. It has like a, a, a somewhat of a smell. Like not a bad smell though. Okay, and then the big tall guys. I, maybe I do need a bigger pot for this. I don't know, it just, it feels slightly tight, but the roots down at the bottom can also grow into the tree fern fiber. So it's like not not that bad. I could just wrap that around for now. And this one can also go in. I don't know, does that even look? Obviously it's not like perfect right now, but does that even look good? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I'm definitely gonna need to tie these off somehow. And I might actually trim the top of this one because it is slightly too tall for it. But let me get some of this soil in. I feel like that's the hard part because... I think I need a wider pot. That, that is better. I can better get some soil in there. And this soil, I mean, it's still perfectly good. It's Monstera and Philodendron soil from Soil Ninja. Um, also, I will link everything down below. I didn't get the tree fern fiber from Soil Ninja. They, I got it from Eastern Tropicals because Soil Ninja doesn't sell um, tree fern fiber. I do need a bit more soil. I feel like... You know, wet soil just like sticks to your hands and it's super messy. <laughs> That's where I am right now. Sorry, I'm just concentrating a little bit, but y'all know how to pot plants at this point. I feel like if you're watching this video, you'll, you'll know. that to the best of my abilities and I'm just going to tie them on I guess got some computer velcro one of my favorite non planty planty tools I'm just gonna cut off probably way more than I need but better have too much than too little 
I'm just going to kind of make it so all of them are secure to the to the pole. And then I can do the same for these sort of taller ones. The Velcro kind of sticks to the fern wood as well. Like you almost don't even need the, the fern wood, the tree fern fiber. You almost don't even need the it to go all the way around. But I do think I am going to chop this one. And I can prop this one separately. Just because it is like that tiny bit too tall for it. And I can actually prop this one with the others that I have. Um, it's not the end of the world. But yeah, I think that's a, a good start. I am definitely going to water this directly after filming this video and I'll show you what it looks like now when it is watered. I originally tried just pouring water over the top of it and I don't think that was the right decision because it kind of just spilled right off the back. So I ended up going in with my water sprayer and spraying the pole to moisten it first just to like kind of get it set into being moist. And then once I was done doing that, I poured some more water over the top. And this is where you can really see the difference in color between the pole being dry and it being moist. But I will keep y'all updated about this and whether or not we're liking it. I don't know, it does make me a little bit nervous because it's just not something that I have tried before. So it's, it's a new fun thing. The other way that you can use it for poles is to put it in a D-shaped pole and pot it up like that as per usual. And I thought that I would try this method as well because this would stay even more hydrated, I think, than the totem. And this is like more my comfort zone. So it's like in between trying an absolutely new thing and trying something that I've done before. So for this one, I brought two options over because I wasn't sure. Because I think it would be a great thing if it works for my Monster Obliqua Peru. Like, I've just pulled this out of my prop box. It is doing so freaking well. Like, it is a happy camper. But I'm scared to experiment on a plant that I'm, like, excited about. I'm more tempted to experiment with something like this, my Monster Silta Picana, which I do know loves a moss pole. Because if it works, I can put this in it. I can put the obliqua on it. But if it doesn't work, I, I think I would be sad if I had put my obliqua on it. So I'm going to be putting some Silta Picana. I mean, these are all water roots. So that also might be a slight adjustment for it. But I think it'll be fine. And normally, I attach the pole... I'm not going to for now because I, I, I need that like little bit of freedom, but going to fill this one slightly differently because I would normally, if I was making a moss pole, uh, I would fill up the, the pole with the substrate first, but since I'm doing it this way, I feel like that's not the right way to go about this because the tree fern fiber feels much more like it's just gonna fall out. So I'm gonna plant these up, essentially, and then fill in the pole with the tree fern fiber and hope that that works. Also, I hope these adapt well to being in soil because I used to have them in semi-hydro um, back ages and ages ago and then I was really bad at um, keeping that moist so I just failed a bit there but I 
think it will like the tree fern fiber because it was on a moss pole still I was just I just had it in semi hydro so let's pot this with soil like up to the normal point really quick I mean so far it's been way easier to pot because I've not had to like try and shove the substrate like in underneath the moss I can just pour it over the top Cool there and then my plan is to take the tree fern fiber and like fill this pole up with it I don't know how compacted it needs to be because like when I do moss poles, I compact them quite heavily in order for them to like retain slightly more moisture. I don't know how compact this needs to be. Imagine this getting quite expensive <laughs> if you were planning on doing like a huge moss pool full of tree fern fiber. But just a small one like this, I feel like is kind of doable. And I think I would do the cut method with this. Where you, like where you put a cup with little holes on top of the pole to make sure it stays moist um, and you like water it that way I think that would make the most sense but this is interesting because like I know people make substrate poles and like this is kind of just like a substrate pole I think that's where I'm gonna fill it up to but then I'm going to go around with my tape as normal um, or computer velcro to make sure that they are adhered well to the surface you can also use those like little staple things I would think those would work really really well in this sort of situation. Sorry, it looks like it's about to storm outside. It's very dark. I don't know if you can tell. Like, it's light here because I'm kind of facing the window, but it is very dark around me. Yeah, I think this will actually be really good. I'm gonna put a couple on just to make sure that it can stay very, very well. And again, I will water this one and show you what it's looking like once it's watered so you can like see the difference in sort of color. So like, so I can also understand the difference and I can be able to tell when it's dehydrated or hydrated and when I need to give it some more water. Honestly, I can only see a tiny difference in color here. So I'm hoping that it'll get more pronounced the wetter it gets. But I didn't want to overwater it because I didn't want to overwater the soil as well. So we're going to see how this one works because I think it'll be a little bit different than using the totem. But I actually quite like the look of that. I don't think it looks bad at all. I mean, it is definitely uh, a bit sideways. I didn't do the best job on centering it, but that's okay. That's fine. I can just face this side towards the light so it gets a little bit more straight. I need to make sure. Actually, that's not bad. And I think potentially because it is more substrate like once the roots kind of grow into this pole and like down it'll be quite stable into the soil down here which I like I can imagine it being 
actually a really, really good thing. So that is brilliant. The last thing I want to do is an experiment um, because I want to test out the fluval. So I got this fluval stratum. I wanted to do an experiment with the fluval stratum as well as the tree fern fiber because I have heard great things about propagating in both. So I wanted to experiment a little bit and try out a few different propagation methods. Kind of like, I think I did a prop experiment similar to this a while back when I was like figuring out the right uh, or like my favorite propagation medium. In the end, I, I, I tend to like um, moss. That's just my general. But I think it would be good to experiment with all of these new things because they're things I've not tried before. So I cut myself a one single strand of my pothos. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them into single node cuttings. Um, because all of these are going to be essentially the exact same thing. Their leaves are all about the same size. They've come from the same vine. So they've got essentially the same genes. And I would think that that would mean that they, under the same conditions, like they'll grow exactly the same as best as possible. So I'm going to find ones with approximately the same leaf size. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna do four things, I think. I'm gonna try my normal moss, which I really like. I'm going to try water, which is my other go-to propagation way. And then I'm gonna try fluval and tree fern fiber. Those are gonna be my four experiments and they'll go in the same place, getting the same amount of light, for the same amount of time each day, and we, we can like check back on all of these later and see which one has done the best or the worst or whatever. Because I have heard some mixed reviews about Fluval. A lot of people really, really love it, but I did ask over on my Instagram story what people thought about it and they were a bit more skeptical about it. I am gonna do, use fresh moss. I could use the stuff that I had the splendids in before, but I think I prefer to use fresh moss. Just, oh my god, it's really raining. Um, just for the sake of this experiment. Normally I would, like, as long as those are healthy, I would reuse it. Um, go there. And then you go in. And that's one. Um, I'm also going to tell you about Fluval as I sort these out because it is something that I don't understand fully yet. So Fluval is um, the brand name and so when people refer to it it's kind of like saying Kleenex instead of tissue or pawn instead of semi-hydroponic medium. Um, so that is that's, that's, that's interesting. I never, oh this cup has a hole in it. This one can be my water cup. Um, but it's just not, yeah, it, it, that's what it's referring to. I think other brands do it, but I'm, I'm also not sure. But basically it was originally used in like planted aquariums. Um, people, oh, this one's a bit funky. That can be my water one. Um, I say funky, it's just like, turned upside down. So is this one. It's fine. They're all fine. <laughs> um, but originally used in planted aquariums because it like doesn't compact. Because I'm pretty sure, unlike um, semi-hydro, you can kind of break apart these little fluval balls. It's just like compacted soil almost. But it is collected from mineral rich foothills of a volcano in Japan. It is Mount Aso, 
um, which is apparently one of the largest volcanoes in the world, which is cool. But it's like nutrient rich soil, I think because of all the carbon that like happens because of volcanoes. Where's the lid for this? Um, but it's like little lightweight granules. Like you can hear it's little granules that work. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's uh, <laughs> I, I'm still unsure of this, but it's often used as well in terrariums, as well as to grow seedlings and propagations within the houseplant community. Like that's what most people in houseplants are using it for. And so that's kind of how I wanted to try it in like propagation form. But, it's just, it like releases essential nutrients, I guess, into the water. But you can use it in conjunction with your current mediums. Like if you are using semi-hydro, you can use this with semi-hydro and it's fine. Um, or you can add it into your soil, which I'm not trying here because that's, I want to like experiment with it like pure first, if that makes sense. Fluval naturally prevents bacteria and algae growth which is good because sometimes when i'm propping in like water or perlite you can kind of get algae growth on it and it's like not ideal it doesn't like harm the plant or anything but it's just like not the most nice thing to look at um and yeah um i'm i'm interested in trying this out because it it it's very different to anything else I have seen before. I just need to put some water in this cup as well as water the tree fern fiber and I think from my understanding people propagate with fluval similar to how they would with perlite or semi-hydro where you like put a layer of it at the bottom. I have also heard it dries out quite quickly so I do need to keep an eye on this wherever I do put it. I need to like be quite on top of um, making sure that it's staying moist. So let me go grab my watering can and water some stuff. Oh, that's too much water. Ah. Uh, okay, I've got to pour some of this out. Ah. Uh, <sighs> That's better. And then a bit of water in the tree fern fiber. And then I'm actually not gonna water. No, I am gonna water the moss. Treat them exactly the same, Emma. They're exactly the same. Spill water all over my desk and <laughs> Okay. Those are good. I should also say that fluval can be expensive. I don't know off the top of my head the sort of cost it can be, but it's definitely more expensive in from what I've seen. And that's why I've like waited to try it out because there's like a money barrier. It's not like the cheapest thing to get, but it is quite heavy comparatively. Like this cup feels like it weighs twice as much as this cup, even though this cup is bigger and has approximately the same amount of substrate in it so it is quite dense though it's also porous so it kind of wicks the moisture up from my understanding <laughs> I'm still like I said quite new to this stuff I can put two in each I could put two in each I could do that Just give it slightly more chances to succeed. This stuff is it's, it's definitely weirder than I'm used to. Very different and somewhat strange, but I'm I'm interested to see how it goes. I put them in my bedroom on top of my mini greenhouse cabinet where they're getting grow light for 10 hours a day and I think they'll like that quite a lot. I think this is where I'm going to end this video. Um, just me starting out trying all of 
these new substrates that are just like so unconventional for me but I've heard great things about so we gotta try we gotta experiment maybe they'll be the next best thing in the good girl household who freaking knows but yeah I do want to like say a big thank you to my patrons for picking this video out and pushing me to experiment and try new things because it's just it's something that I probably would have just dismissed had I not had them pushing me to do it. So thanks to my patrons for picking out this video. Also, I want to say a big thank you to the newest member of the Good Growing Fam, Louise. Thanks for joining. I really appreciate you joining over on Patreon. I hope you are enjoying the content over there. Um, if anybody else fancies joining, um, though there's absolutely no pressure, it's only three pounds a month or about four euros or four dollars up to you obviously no pressure um if it's not for you that's absolutely fine but if you can it really helps me out so yeah and you can like kind of get to know me a little bit better over there so yeah i really hope um the rest of you enjoyed watching this video if you did please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future if you've had any experience with any of these substrates again please tell me let me know your experience because i uh I'm curious. I'm all, I always want to know what other people have had before. Not before, but like, so I know what to expect. If there's anything that's like glaring and could be wrong, <laughs> let me know. Or if I've done it wrong, <laughs> please tell me. Um, yeah, and don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. And don't forget to keep on growing. Bye!